Greetings and salutations to the fans. Good morning, evening, or afternoon, and thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast here today. Got a hell of a matchup on the way. Team Liquid taking on Navi to lead things off here in one of our final days of the G1 Western Qualifier. Liquid is a bit of a mystery, really, especially over the last 30 days. They interplayed today, sporting a decent break-even record of 9-8 and eight across the month of April, but what makes them hard to pin down is the fact that when they're good, they're as impressive a team as you're going to see in the West, but there's still just one series of Above 500. They put some big wins under their belt of late two, bringing home the hardware in the D2L Season 2 Championship. But the problem seems to be one of feast or famine. Wins and losses both come in flurries. Speaking of losses, the one that sent them down to the lower bracket was a bit of a shocker too. EG, which has been having problems with their consistency as well, has all of a sudden gone on an absolute tear and bested Liquid for the second time in the and winner's bracket team. meeting just a couple days ago. Then in typical Liquid fashion, they bounced back in their lower bracket opener against Kaipi and put together a 2 to nothing stomp that made them look unbeatable. Liquid is one of the freshly announced invitees to the International Three, so with worry off of their shoulders and a chance to treat the rest of spring as a tune-up for the big stage in Seattle, taking down Na'Vi would go a long way in not only extending their chances for some land practice here in the G1, but would go a long way in building confidence as we head towards August. Now, Na'Vi, what is there to say about Na'Vi that hasn't been said a thousand times before, really? I mean, the consistently successful team to the point that they're arguably one of the most consistent in both online and land, they're going to be a favorite to place well, if not outright, when almost every tournament they enter. And the G1 Western Qualifier is no exception. However, if you're going to get a win and find their way into the live final, they're going to have to do so coming out of the lower bracket following a stellar performance from Alliance in the winner's bracket semifinal, which sent them down to the lower bracket. They're 9-2 and two throughout the month of April and 14-6 and six over their last 20, and the Superstar Squad is fresh off their win at the EMS 1 Spring Final as well. In the few losses they've taken, though, they have showed weaknesses that can be exploited, namely high-pressure lineups that, that can exploit the compositions they tend to draft. Strong, but thin, and susceptible to head-on pressure. Na'Vi, though, is unbeaten by Liquid in their handful of meetings throughout 2013, and they'll be looking to keep that record perfect here today. So there's our introductions. We see the draft is already continuing to unfold in front of us. Want to introduce my co-broadcaster for the morning. Going to be dropping the knowledge, as he always does, EG's own Milk. Milk, how you doing, my friend? Beatings and hallucinations. <laughs> How we doing, brother? Good morning. And again, thank you so very much for joining us for the broadcast. I know you've got a big match coming up. but yeah, I actually thought our match was right now, so uh, that's why I'm even on. <laughs> so, yeah, I was talking to you a little bit earlier. said, you know what, AC, I'll help you out. But had a little red wine, had a, you know, had a fun night, but nice tune-up for the morning, I would say, right? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely hungover, though. <laughs> Well, to uh, take the edge off, how about we talk about the picks and the bands as they seem to be proceeding in front of us. Liquid going to be taking out the Bad Rider and the Knicks Assassin. No Wisp or Prophet on behalf of, of uh, Na'Vi. They are going to get themselves the Phantom Lancer Keeper of the Light combo, though, to go with Rubik and, you know, talking to Puppy at length. Ru he is of the mind that Rubik might be the best support in the entire game. But I really like the front two, and now with the front three out of Liquid, we're talking strong drafts on both sides. A Nakes Bomb going to be very possible with Lifestealer working in conjunction with Storm Spirit and the Shadow Demon, obviously a solid counter to Phantom Lancer. Yeah, both lineups are really, really strong from the get-go. This is something we've seen uh, Navi do a lot uh, ever since they did their roster makeover. They, they've been picking Keeper of the Light and Rubik for their support duo, and that's probably the support duo they've been the most successful with, Poppy on the Keeper of the Light, and Kuroki playing one of the best support Rubiks I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, and then, it, to me, it seems like Navi is a bit unsure of themselves the way they... Like, they have to pick up Phantom Lancer and Anti Mage in a lot of their games, something they didn't always do mm -hmm. uh, with their old roster. So they're definitely out to prove a point and, and win games rather than just troll around the way Navi sometimes do. What we see now. Liquid's lineup is really good with the uh, with the next drop bomb and, uh, and Shadow Demon for a potential late game counter against Phantom Lancer. So both lineups are Phantom evenly Phantom matched right Phantom. now. I feel, I feel like it's, it's a matter of playstyle. What I like so far about Liquid's lineup and what jumps out is, you know, you see a Phantom Lancer, you want to put pressure on that Phantom Lancer. You don't want to give him time to sit back and farm himself a full in for, unless, of course, you happen to be Na'Vi, who did that to, uh, to Alliance yesterday and got a crazy win in Game 2. For those who were part of that broadcast, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But with Liquid's lineup, they not only have the ability to apply pressure, they have the ability to go ahead and just engage him as a single target, look to gank him out and make him susceptible when Phantom Lancer, because of the strength of Doppelwalk, is generally a little bit tougher to be able to bring down, especially whenever he's having he's going to have help around. But, you know, Na'Vi not without their own ways to be 
mobile as well. Keeper of the Lights Ultimate going to allow them to bounce him around. He's going to be able to split push much more confidently than he might be able to otherwise. But so far, I mean, looking at the front three here, Melk, what, who do you think is going to be under the gun more in the early game to get more done? Is it going to be Navi looking to free things up for Phantom Lancer early or Team Liquid going to be looking to get a good start on Lifestealer and try to get him active? Well, I, I think both teams will probably allow the other one to farm their lanes. So a lot of it's going to come down to the Storm Spirit against whatever matchup they're going to put him in mid. Uh, looking at Team Liquid's lineup, it's obvious they might want to do the aggression with, with, with Nyx because... Phantom Lancer is a lot stronger late game, and you really want to play a late game against Phantom Lancer. Uh, I don't think with the current picks that Liquid will go into another late game hero. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Nyx can at all do the same uh, thing Antimage did yesterday against Alliance. Right. Yeah, so that was a Liquid crazy game. looking to put on the aggression. Well, when I look at, okay, they're going to go with the Queen of Pain. And, you know, I mean, that's not a surprise. We knew Navi was going to need a mid. But looking at the defensive trialing, they're probably going to be putting to uh, putting to work here with the Keeper of the Light, the Rubik, and the Phantom Lancer. You've got two extremely aggressive heroes um, if you're Team Liquid. They, are they looking to maybe get a Leshrac or a Lena and go ahead and offensively tri lane? And doing that would actually free up Solo Safe Lane Farm for the Spirit, and they could get another high-value mid. Puck is still a, no, never mind. They did ban out the Puck themselves. So just trying to theory craft a little bit. But this is something that I think Liquid does like to do. They really enjoy putting pressure onto lanes, and as good as Keeper of the Light can be, we've seen it time and time again, he is a hero that if you can just close the distance on him before he gets level 3 with 2 points in the Chakra Magic, you actually can put a lot of pressure onto a tri lane, even with a Phantom Lancer. Yeah, the Keeper of the Light is definitely hard to play against, and I doubt they'll aggressive tri lane. One thing they could do was get sort of greedy and pick up a lion. Mm -hmm. We've seen Fluff and stuff uh, liking to pick up a lion, get farm on him, get a blink dagger, and it's especially good now that Nazis uh, Nazi picked up the Queen of Pain. Uh, another thing they could do, which they ran in the past, is an Enchantress. Uh, they like running around with a smoke combo of Shadow Demon and Enchantress and gang as much as possible. They do go with the Lina, though. Pretty safe pick. Yeah, whatever. And now they might actually go aggressive trying. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, I've seen Liquid play a number of times, and the way that they like to deal with, with heroes like Phantom Lancer, especially when they get their hands on a Lifestealer, and, you know, you can't say enough about how strong Light Striker Ray following up Disruption actually is when you can gen then follow it up with an Open Wounds and a Rage that completely makes Lifestealer immune to any sort of uh, Illuminate reprisal from Keeper of the Light. This is just kind of quintessential Liquid, and as you said, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, you know, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for them to go, okay, we're going to pick an Animage now, and, you know, if they're not going to do that, just increasing their ability to not only apply pressure in an offensive tri lane, but to apply pressure across the map is, uh, you know, in terms of smoke ganks onto mid and so on and so forth, is something that I think is really going to be a high priority for them. But that Brewmaster pickup for Navi, my friend, that's what you call an anchor hero. That's a phrase I use a lot. It is so hard to deal with a brew once he hits six and has his ultimate up in the early and mid game stages. That's a good pickup. Uh, it'll allow Storm Spirit to farm freely on middle lane, though, so. It's a bit of a, a mix-up. It's good, very good against Lina, though, and I think they might regret not having picked up the Lion instead because it's, it's, it just got in, infinitely better with the Hex and Disables against both land, uh, Panda and Queen of Pain. Uh, I'm a bit curious to see what Liquid will pick up. It's probably a safe lane farmer now. Hmm. Or they might have just... Uh, what I think they might be doing here, actually, is solo farming the Storm Spirit, because what I think they're going to anticipate here, I mean, when you look at the lanes out of them, where's the brew going to go? I mean, they could solo the Queen of Pain, but either way, I, th I think they're just counting on Storm Spirit being able to solo farm. They may run that. Yeah, it's going to be well-known. Yeah, that's, that's probably a solo uh, safe lane. Yep. Storm Spirit. That's what I was thinking. Then take the bulb, take bulb a mid, and he is going to be on the Beastmaster, at least by the first look of things. And then TC farming the Life Stealer with Shadow Demon and Lena. They could just they could just throw us for a loop and defensive tri lane anyway, run the Storm mid and the Beastmaster long. But, you know, whenever you prioritize Alina as your fourth pick up there, I can't help but think that is indicative of an offensive tri lane. But either way, a lot of cerebral drafting going on. Looking at the five here on both sides, who do you give the edge to, Melk? seconds remaining. It's, it's hard to say. I, I think Navi will come out on top. They have a, a lineup that they feel really comfortable playing with the Poppy and Kuroki having their, like, that's their main heroes. They go to heroes when they want to win games. Then they have the Phantom Lancer that's fairly hard to deal with late game and 
I don't think Navi will have any difficulties taking this into late game. They can defend the towers, they can win the 5-on-5 five five fights with the Pen and Queen of Pain combo and, and Rubik to boot, so I, I, I definitely favor Navi's lineup. If Korok is going to be solo farming the Storm Spirit, he is making his way to top, and it will be Bulba most likely going mid as we see the rest of the tri lane making their way down towards the Radiant Jungle. And, you know, looking at this lineup, you know, it's the statistics on Keeper of the Light are just stupidly silly, by the way. I mean, it's one thing to talk about him being picked and banned a lot, but his winning record over the last, you know, week or two in professional Dota is something like 80% whenever he actually is in the game, whenever he is picked instead of banned. So still a very strong hero, but people I feel are beginning to figure out how to deal with him. And he's one of those heroes that just as I've watched teams have success against him, as rare as that is, just getting in his face early on, you know, playing in an, on, in an offensive trial lane like this before he can get to level three, before he can start to support uh, mana pool besides his own with chakra magic once it gets to level two just seems to be really the way to go and if you can take control of the enemy's jungle early put some pressure on him to fall back stack camps and just farm that way to get his levels instead of giving the safety belt to the to the uh to the farming hero does seem to be effective dindy's actually going to be on our brewmaster so he's going to be going mid with funic making his way to the off lane and tc gonna be telekinesis gonna use open wounds on kuro and Kuro might be our first blood. Illuminate caught everyone, but Liquid does add first blood to the tally. And they're not done yet. Mike's just... Wow! They're going to turn around and go on Puppy. Now Havost is in trouble. This could be a disaster. TC has seven seconds until he has open wounds ready again. Light Strike Array from Fluff dead on the money. And just as the creep spawn, three kills, including a first blood, go the way of Liquid. Don't know that you could ask for a whole lot more out of an offensive tri lane. I don't know what to tell you, man. That was <laughs> unexpected. First off, Navi never backs down. That's uh, CIS Dota for you. Mm -hmm. All man mode. So I wasn't surprised in them taking the fight. I was a bit surprised with Kurogi trying to get the next stock on a place he can't get stuck no more. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I had Smike skilling up Shadow Poison on the Shadow Demon. Great, great <laughs> choice. That just gave them three kills. I don't think Navi anticipated how much damage that would come out of that. Well, I killed off Kurogi from him being out of place and having used telekinesis for no apparent reason. And then Poppy suddenly went to half HP without realizing. And then he went down. And yeah. then Kavos was like, oh god, I don't have double walk. And then he went down. <laughs> that was amazing. And yeah, I agree with you. I think really it was just a bizarre sequence of circumstances of bad decisions from Navi. By the way, I want to do point out in case you missed it, the one up there next to Navi was Mike who promptly walked back to these ancients and suicided himself to get uh, to get things back and going this early on. But I think that demonstrates the point I was kind of harping at, where as good as Keeper of the Light is, he's not really that great until level three. I mean, level one Illuminate does do damage, but it's not the crippling, you know, mass amount of damage that you see once he gets to level four, level five, level six, and so on. And we're going to see right here. I mean, they're going to eat that. That hurts. But after that, what's he going to do? That's on cooldown. He now doesn't have mana. He doesn't have a point of chakra magic. And that's basically what was exploited against Na'Vi. He couldn't do anything after landing the one Illuminate and Liquid capitalizing in a big, big way. I'm going to go ahead and take the moment to run through our lineup, see who's handling who. Puppy going to be playing on Keeper of the Light. Phantom Lancer farmed by Havost. In mid, as mentioned, that's Dindy on the Brewmaster. Rubik going to be handled by Kuroki, his signature hero. And Funnick going to be soloing the off lane on our Queen of Pain and laying into Kor Korok at the same time. Korok got to be careful. Lifesteal are going to be farmed by TC in this offensive tri lane. Korak has mentioned taking some abuse up here in his own solo lane. Lena going to be played by Fluff. We're going to have Beastmaster in mid by Bulba. And Shadow Demon going to be handled by IX Mike as we do have a pause. So looking at these lanes early on, Melk, I mean, obviously, that's a big, big win. Liquid's ahead quite a bit in this offensive tri lane. I mean, aside from that, though, let's analyze mid and top. I mean, you're talking Dindy versus Beastmaster. One would think this would be a wash for both of them, really. Oh, Dindy and Funic actually swapped heroes from their initial picks. Dindy picked up the Queen of Pain in the, in the early picks uh, phase, so they could swap it around. Uh, I think uh, Dindy should, should be winning middle-handedly. Uh, both, both of them will farm, but then they can actually keep the Beastmaster away until 6 at least. Mm -hmm. uh, top lane, I'd, I'd give it to Phonic. Uh, Storm Spirit, not having that middle lane ledge advantage is not that good for him. And, and Phonic can harass a lot more with the with the Shadow Strike. We actually see him opting to go for a level 2 Shadow Strike. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to keep Korok at bay for a long time. He does have his... Uh, oh, actually he doesn't. Look at the chicken. He's got Tango and Healing Solve coming in, so he's really being 
hurt right now, and Funnig will have his bottle soon. So that lane's gonna go heavily in favor of Funnig unless he fucks it up. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly, but yeah, fun, seeing Funnig on Queen of Pain is exciting to me. And you know, I've seen Dindy, I've seen Dindy and Funnig both play both of these heroes. I'm a big Funnic fanboy, I'm not going to lie. I feel like he, I mean, he's gotten a lot more attention lately, but up until he joined up with Navi, I felt like he was the most consistently, one of the most consistently underrated players, especially from a playmaking position, as he does tend to play on heroes like this. And when he was with Empire, he tended to play very high value playmaking heroes. But seeing him on the Queen of Pain, you know, he is going to have a great start here. I totally agree. And what that's going to do is not only slow down Korok, who's going to be an essential hero in terms of trying to apply pressure to Na'Vi once the laning phase begins to break down, but it's also going to guarantee that he can play very reactionary and aggressive Dota, which I think is going to do a lot to free the map up for Na'Vi. Yeah, definitely. That's what they need right now. After, like, one of the things I was about to say before the... <laughs> triple kill on bottom happened, was that Liquid is actually running... It, it's a huge risk going aggressive, because if it if it doesn't work out, and it's hard to do against the Keep of the Light, they're gonna really be on the back end of, of this game, and then they got that triple kill, so I was just gonna stay quiet and say, uh... Four but. minutes... Four minutes in, we got four kills on the board. And, I mean, we can look at the CS. See, Beastmaster's more than holding his own here. Bulba's doing great. He's got 23 CS in the face of that Brewmaster's actually behind. TC's farming considerably better than the PL. I mean, he hasn't opened up a gigantic gap or anything. But, you know, once Keeper of the Light hits three, we may see them begin to play a little bit more aggressive. At least having Chakra Magic, he can allow Havos to spam Spirit Lance a bit more. Ix Mike actually just stacked the camp for Navi. I'm not <laughs> sure what that was about. Uh, which one? Was it the... Uh, no. He actually always did. Did he mean to do that? He actually stacked it for them? I'm not sure uh, why he did that or how it even happened. I think he shadow poisoned it. Uh -huh. Just a scout. And then the creep <laughs> can respawn. So <laughs> uh, we that wasn't too good because that gives Navi a lot of extra level they desperately need right now. Yeah, and right now, I mean, that seems to be, and you know, that's something that's easy to underestimate. There's plenty of kill potential on the side of Na'Vi. At level 1, we saw Liquid obviously had much more combat prowess. But as they catch up, get some levels, and, you know, now that we see not just Puppy getting his levels, but uh, Kuroki as well. He's up to level 4 already. He's got 2 points in the Fable, 2 in the Telekinese. They're going to have to be real careful to not have Fluff and IX Mike out of position. You know, that's what makes Telekinesis just such an unbelievably hard to deal with spell. Is it, you know, it can take a small mistake and turn it into a big one in a hurry. Look at top lane, though. Look how much Funic dominates Korok. Korok actually had to go into the jungle and neutral creep and then go home and heal now. <laughs> yep. Funic's one and a half level above him. Five minutes in. So as, as good as this bottom lane is doing, doesn't seem like that top lane is doing much. Well, obviously not doing much unless you're in Na'Vi's shoes. We're still, it's, everything's been pretty quiet since that initial outburst. Still keeping an eye predominantly on this bottom lane just because this is where you would expect a lot of action to take place. But Kuro has made his way to mid, and that's dangerous for Bulba. Bulba, of course, on the Beastmaster has no escape. One of the easier heroes to gank in this position, and we're going to see it. Telekinesed up to the high ground there. Is, he's going to blow split. And that... that was the possibly the worst play I've ever seen come out of Dendi. <laughs> yeah, to put it mildly, did he have his I mean, butt Dendi's smacked probably wrong? one of the most amazing players in all of Europe, all of the world, and he never or rarely ever makes mistakes that crucial, but he opted not to clap and go for the ultimate instead. The thing is, the primal split was five a good five seconds delayed, mm -hmm. so Bulba had more than enough t time to just run away yeah that was very odd. yeah i mean that honestly almost smells like a uh, a button mispress if you know well we'll hold that thought for a minute as funic is now getting some attention from bulba and fluff bulba thanking his lucky stars that didn't be making a rare bad play but yeah i mean it's like you see something like that it's so bizarre you almost have to say did he just hit the wrong button but i mean depending on what keys he uses uh, you know, it's I doubt they're very close, but as it stands, the failed game. I'm going to say he either lagged or misclicked or dropped a hot cup of coffee in his <laughs> lap or something. Oh, Funny's gonna go down with this. Yep, Funny gets roared and cleaned up by Liquid. The ad, and that's so important for them. I mean, it, uh, hang on, TC's getting engaged at bottom. He has rage, but he's taken a few tower shots. Spirit Lance is up in one second. We're gonna see it spent. He's continuing to run Illuminate, nipping at his heels, but doesn't do the damage in the infest. 
more than enough to get him back up and fighting. In the meantime, though, Liquid going to capitalize on this top lane. But yeah, being able to finally just bring it into this lane for poor Korok, doubt he's going to have a problem with that. And we see the top tier one it does end up dropping. Beastmaster takes the last hit there. Four to one. And that one on Navi's side, not even really a kill. More IX Mike opting to take the quick way home after that battle down in the river. And all things beginning to look pretty well. Phantom Lancer's farm is not spectacular. He's actually being doubled up by TC. And they're going to try to gank it, but Phase Boot's already done. Gets him just out of range of Telekinese. And that's one thing TC's always so good at. I mean, you want to talk about characteristics that define a player. TC loves to farm heroes and take risks with them, play, you know, a little face forward. And he tends to react so well, and he's just so hard to gank. Now Mike's going to be spotted, but he picks up an invis, and they don't know where he is. Yep, he is Nothing gone. Nothing going the way of Navi right now. But meanwhile, Bunny dies on top again. Not wow. even uh, using Primal Raw, they just combo with the Storm and the Lina. You know, it's and what's remarkable about this is Liquid is so in control, but when you look at their classical record against Na'Vi, they've never, to my knowledge, I could be very, very wrong, but to my knowledge, they've never beaten Na'Vi. I mean, they've, they've matched up with him at least three or four times in 2013 and lost every single time. And traditionally, Na'Vi has just known how to deal with Liquid. And this is, but this is prototypical Liquid style. This isn't anything Na'Vi is not going to have known about. There's a rage dodging a Spirit Lance. But, um, you know, Liquid. Great movement coming out from Fluff. Mm -hmm. Being in all five kills, obviously him being in the first three kills will help that, but being in the next two kills on the Queen of Pain too, just leaving the next to farm on his own, knowing that they'll have a hard time at all dealing with him because of the Coddle in the lane. Uh, they're gonna go for it once more, and he's just gonna rage out of it. He maxed up rage too, so that's... And we're gonna see the roar spin on Dindy. Dindy will be cleaned up for free. And the poor Panda not having that good of a game there in mid we're gonna you know i usually try to wait to 10 minutes to take a look at the goal grab for the first time i'm gonna look now and yeah that's about what you'd expect we're coming up on it looks like it's getting ready to jump in terms of measurement there so you're talking probably close to 5,000 gold in oh, the favor. a ton of fun arcane boots buckler mm -hmm. he'll have a headdress on chicken if he wanted to too so he almost got that mech you know funny actually finishes off korok on top lane well, it's one thing, finally, their first legit kill goes their way. They are going to end up losing a tier 1 tower here in mid, though. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, TC miraculously just killed off Havost. <laughs> Every time I turn the look somewhere else, the kill's happening that honestly shouldn't be happening. We've seen Queen of Pain die twice, which is remarkable in itself. You see TC killing off Havost. I mean, this is just a rough, a rough opening game. For the Queen of weren't that surprising because they had a lot of ways to initiate. Uh, a Smoke Beastmaster, there's no escaping that, mm -hmm. uh, especially not with a Lina, Lina follow-up. But Storm Spirit jumping in and holding her in her place too is another guaranteed kill, especially with Lina follow-up. Right. So the Queen of Pain kills aren't that surprising to me. The first initial three kills was surprising to me, and Nakes killing off a Phantom Lancer on his own against a Tri-Lane seems off. So I'm not sure if Funnick is too happy with his team right now. <laughs> Bulba, in the meantime, is going to be going up to a mechanism. He's actually got the uh, the recipe for it completed now. So they're already in a position where they can start to just shove down their throat. And Armlet's already done on TC as well. Mike, he's got at least a set of brown boots. The rest of them hurting a bit. And we can still see Korok definitely behind. Now we're going to have an open wins on Hovos. Here comes Storm Spirit. He's going to try to grab him. And there's the Laguna Blade as well. There's a split from the Brewmaster. They're going to end up getting at least one return kill. But trading a Shadow Demon for a Phantom Lancer, that's a trade Liquid's not going to have a problem with. We're actually going to see Dindy pursue this out. There's the air aspect, and Fluff comes back down the earth, but Bulbas are ready to engage him. Funic going to be roared and cleaned up immediately, just as the split ends, and Kuro playing way too far forward. Their eyes were bigger than their stomach, and Puppy next on the kill list. 11-3, to three. and Liquid taking every opening that Na'Vi gives them and turning it against them in a big, big way. Two things to, to notice here was uh, one, one Bulba TPing in with the mecha mechanism, so all that farm on him really pays off early on. He's been in a lot of the kills, he's been proactive in ganging every lane now, and coming in with that me mechanism helped out his team to be able to fight and add on another three kills to, their, to that fight. Another thing I, I noticed was Denti's not too comfortable playing this panda, not in terms of, of the primal split anyways. Mm -hmm. When he went on the Lina, he 
got off the 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 hurl boulder mm -hmm. and at the same time he cycloned Lena so the the hero wasn't actually stunned and then as soon as the whole whole boulder was cancelled by the cyclone he actually let the Lena down again so he didn't really use primal split for anything and I definitely agree. Dendi does not seem to be in his comfort zone. Does have a blink dagger up, so maybe that'll allow him to get more in a playmaking kind of a mode. In the meantime, though, Liquid poking their nose into the Roche pit. And they feel pretty confident about this as Korok bounces in to help out. Here comes Fluff, taking a look at the vision, or more importantly, the lack thereof. Just look at how beautiful this vision is out of Liquid. They have total control of that quadrant of the map. They know if and when anyone's going to be around, and that allows them to just take this Roche with absolutely no concerns at all. So far, great plays coming out from all of Liquid, basically. From IX Mike's level 1 Shadow Poison, <laughs> stacking out 3 kills early on, to Fluff's movement around the map, Bulba's movement around the map, uh, and TC being able to, to handle his own on the bottom lane as a solo makes. I'd say the only one who's been... Like, Korok's lucky to have a team this great, basically, <laughs> but, but he's coming back into the game now. He's making the most of... A, a bad lane, so Liquid is oh, just getting all over the place now. Phonic! Yeah, I agree with your, uh, just to echo your previous comment that I think is highlighted right there. Phonic has got to be raging, not necessarily at his team, but at least internally. He had a great start, he dominated his lane, but we saw right there, fresh off of the Roshan, Korok able to just roll the dice, dive behind the tower with the Aegis, and of course had TC inside via Infest. They get another kill on Phonic, and they take yet another tower. And already, only two outer tier towers remaining for Na'Vi, and we are 15, not even, 15 minutes into this game. Just This is one of the most dominant performances I've ever seen of Liquid and TC now looking to go Basher. Fluff actually has both Arcane Boots and a Blink Dagger on a support leader mm -hmm. 14 minutes into the game. So that's amazing. Uh, another thing that must be very frustrating to Phonic, just to point that out again is not only did he up Korok by almost two levels five minutes into the game he also has 40 denies on him mm -hmm. com completely dominated his lane and this is how he's being repaid <laughs> that oh, must be frustrating Dindy. Dindy gonna go ahead and use the blink and he has a haste room but storm shot a little wide not that time Dindy brought back there's the open they that's every spell in the game every spell in the game was just used on Dindy and he dies immediately we're talking 13 to 3 at 15 minutes into the game, 16 kills in 15 minutes, and nope, Bulba gonna go ahead and spin a roar as he was engaged upon by Funnick. Spirit Lance gonna do some damage from downtown, but with his team reacting, wow, did he just Sonic Wave? Yeah, he did, got him right at the edge he, of it. He did, and uh, Hovost has actually chosen to go into a gank mode. Mm -hmm. Saw him running around from the dire jungle despite bottom lane being fairly open to farm. So. I'm assuming they're desperate on Navi right now and want to make kills happen and have all their heroes invested into it. Mm -hmm. The same way we saw yesterday, we saw Kovost uh, opening up with a Yasha into a Manta style build on the Antimates and then going Battle Fury afterwards. Right. Well, Vost, right now, he's at least beginning to get something into his inventory. He's got his Tranquils and his Drums. At 16, he could be in worse shape, especially given what a disaster that bottom lane turned out to be and what a disaster the later stages of this early game have turned out to be. And, that, you know, if, if you're liquid right now, Milk, do you have a reason to let off or are you just going to do what it looks like they're going to do? They're going to infest the Lifestealer back into Korok and he's going to go looking for a target and Phonic might be the number one target and Korok getting into position near the little shrine temple thingy. But, okay, not going to find a target. They're just going to go ahead and not take the chance. I think they're definitely going full throttle. One of the key issues with their lineup is they don't have push ability against a keeper of the light so they'll really have to bring down the keeper to even be able to mm -hmm. push the towers and as long as keeper has Rubik and Panda standing in, in, in his defense it's very hard for them to to actually go on him yep. And that kind of comes down to what I was talking about with the whip. Hold on. Kuro going to use Rage to get away there. Dindy thought about it. Oh, there's the roar, though. Can they clean him up in time? They can. Fluff blinks in and gets the kill with the Laguna Blade. He started to split, canceled it. 
But in the end, it didn't matter as Korok re-engages. That Aegis is still up, by the way. How much time does he have? In about two or three more minutes. So they can honestly... They might think about maybe trying to crack this here. However, with Brewmaster still having his ultimate and the respawn time still being so low, probably just got to settle for tier twos. Well, oh, get the tier two. Oh. And Funic engaged back upon. He will be able to blink to safety. And Korok says, no, sir, I'm coming out. I'm coming after you. And Havost now pursuing him out. They may be able to get this Aegis, and they will. Dendi's there, still hasn't used Split, so this should be... Well, no, it is a Storm Spirit, so if he just gets... Oh, good roar by Koro, who had stolen it, and okay. Looks like Dendi going to use the Split again on a roared target that wasn't going anywhere, but as it stands, they lose the Tier 2. At least they get a return kill as well as an Aegis out of it, though. Dendi did an, a much unneeded buyout. He had 10 seconds left, and the Panda didn't really change the tides of the, of the fight at, the, mm -hmm. at any point. And then uh, another primal split that was uncalled for. Yep. He seems a bit shook up. Well, just to be, you know, and th this is just asking from, from a professional player's perspective. As a, as a broadcaster, when I see some of the mistakes that Navi is making, what, you know, from, from my chair anyway, what seems to be the problem is communication. Um, you know, and uh, of course every team's different. But with, it seems like everyone on Na'Vi right now is kind of doing their own thing and their synergy, you know, in terms of both their heroes as well as what they're doing in their own right. Seems to be a little off, especially when you compare it to whenever they're playing at top efficiency. Would you agree? Oh, definitely, definitely. But I've, I've never thought that the whole Phantom Lance playstyle has been something that fits them very well. But I do understand and appreciate the fact that they want to win games. Mm. And I'm guessing... Puppy is trying to make a statement saying that Cardo PL is far and away the best combo in the game because he's been picking it in almost every game that they've been having their backs against the wall. Yep. So, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd much rather prefer to see the good old aggressive Navi playstyle where they basically don't give a rat's ass. Yep. I very much agree with you. Very much agree with you. And tell you the truth, just again from a broadcaster's point of view, having watched Puppy as much as up, hold on. Jeez, Korok, coming from downtown, and Puppy's the target. They're going to lock him down in the shadow of his own Tier 3. Now can they get away in time? Bulba's there to bail him out if they need it, but they don't. So they're going to take a Tier 2, and with the Keeper of the Light down, that's another anchor hero, much like the Brew just heard a roar on Akuro uh, with absolutely no follow-up, so Liquid with a questionable call of their own there. I think Bulba was spraying his pants all excited about all the kills <laughs> happening and, and them having a, a great lead on Navi. Well, speaking of great lead, they're tripling up their opposition. 16 to 5. We take a look at the gold. Yeah, that's a pretty big lead. 12,000 gold going the way of Team Liquid right now. And I just heard another Opens Wounds. They're going to engage back on Havost. And he has a gem, so Havost is going to be able to hustle away. He's got a drum charge, so even if he, ne even if he uh, didn't need it, he still would have probably been able to get away. But yeah, it's a pretty big lead, to put it mildly. Now, I mean, of course, at, at this stage, though, and again, this is from your professional player's perspective, you know, you're up against the PL. How confident are you as Liquid right now? Does that the looming specter of PL just getting out of control still really put a lot of pressure on you? Or are you really beginning to feel quite comfortable with your lead at this point? I think they're very comfortable. They, I don't think they could be any better with their lead right now. Um, but... The fact that they have a hard time pushing in unless they pick off Panda and keep off the light, mm -hmm. combined with PL being the uh, nuisance he is, mm -hmm. probably still puts them on the... They're probably still worried, yeah. Uh, Havos is 800 off his Diffusal Blade, so by then the supports will already start being in trouble. It's not really much, much of a problem right now, as Lina can probably burst him down on her own, but... As the game progresses, and if he gets up, you know, man's hand hard, mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard for Liquid to actually handle him. It's not, Kork doesn't have all that much farm. Right. He's got an. Oh, he does not have an Orchid. He has nothing. He's, he's oh, actually has an Orchid. He has an Oblivion staff. But, yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, and we've seen it time and time again. Navi is going to take a tier one top. Liquid looking for a target and not able to find one. They're just going to go ahead and go and say, you know what, that's fine. Let's try and take a tier three. Eh, no, never mind. They're going to think better of it. TC, in the meantime, has continued to farm. And he's actually not far at all from an Abyssal. Um, he's about 800 gold out from that already. So, his so they got a great farm on the Nyx, but a lifestealer against a Phantom Lancer late game doesn't really 
add up, so they desperately need some more items on mm-hmm. Korok to be able to handle that. You see Fluff running around with a Blink Dagger and a Yule Scepter. So Lina support has a lot more farm than the Storm Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we, yeah. we can see the reaction up the top, and Dindy and company Perhaps looking to force a fight here. There is help to the south and Fluff and IX Mike. And here we go. They're going to grab Korok and blow him up. Sonic Wave spent completely unnecessarily. But they do take him off the board, at least for the moment. Bulba, though, is going to be there to roar Havost. Out comes the infest from TC, and that's going to be a dead Havost. Havost, unfortunately, has just died so much this game, and it's showing. The top three farmers, four of the top five, in fact, belonging to Liquid. Havost has less farm than Lena. And the Beastmaster. The Beastmaster is surprising in itself, but even Fluff is out farming a boast at this point. Kuro, you see Ball Lightning. Kuro just always seems to have the funniest spells. You know, you see a Rubik play, there's a couple of spells you tend to see stolen, you know, over and over again in a, in a given, game, given game. Kuro, no, he steals everything in a game. Yeah, he's been on uh, on target with all the spell steals so far. Unfortunately, he's been dying a lot of the fights, and they none of the fights are actually turned in their favor, so mm-hmm. not something you really take much notice in. Can't help but think that the Beastmaster pick was really great coming out from Liquid, and especially the way they lane it, choosing to go middle lane with it, making sure it's, it's gonna get all the farm endeavors in the world. Oh, puppy. Korok, Korok came from... Oh, wow! Good telekinesis from Korok! Is that enough? Yes! The one auto attack, not nearly enough to bring him down. And Puppy bailed out by his buddy. KKY. PPY. Give him a high five, my friend. Liquid, though, not gonna squander the time have moved themselves into the Roche Pit, and TC's actually going to get a Curass. He's not going to get an Abyssal, so totally get that. Tank himself up, make it harder for Na'Vi to stand, but I think, you know, what what we can, what everyone can agree on is what's going to be the most important element of Liquid's path to victory is going to be how effectively they can get in, grab one or two prime targets, Brewmaster and Keeper of the Light, as you mentioned, those anchor heroes that just make it so hard to crack a Tier 3. They're going to have to get up some real good play out of Korok for sure. They really do, but uh, with all the item progression they have on all of their heroes, they can easily fight the panda too, so they don't have to really worry about the panda. I don't think Fluff does at all, mm-hmm. despite him only running around with 800 HP. <laughs> well, he is 8 eight oh and 6, so you talk about him. And so at some point, the courier died. I just saw the, the Radiance courier just respond. I didn't even catch that. Korok uh, base jumped for it, spending all of his mana when Navi was pushing top, so he went in... Uh. I'll draw it out for you right here. <laughs> oh, got you. Yeah, so I saw him jump. I thought he was looking for a target. I actually didn't see that he had gotten the courier, so my bad on that one. But anyway, we're 25 minutes in, 23 kills on the board, the vast majority of which belong to Liquid. That gold lead has basically leveled off, so at the very least, Navi has stopped the bleeding. It's a shame they're still lacking a leg. But the experience is down at 7,500 now with the fresh Aegis now in the possession of Liquid as well. That once again, they put it on Korok. So. And Korok should, you know, he's not super far away from his Orchid. If they want to turtle this out, take a few minutes, just grab it. They should be in good shape. Bob picked up a Aghanim Scepter now, so it's going to be real hard escaping from him. He can initiate from so far away, so Dendy's going to have to be careful. Mm-hmm. So does Phonics, so does anyone on Navi basically, but there's just so much lockdown on Liquid, there's nothing Navi can really do. They can't move out of their base, they can't establish map control. Just gotta do what Phonics is doing on top and play as cocky as you possibly can and say, okay, I'm just gonna take the farm on top and if they choose to go for me, that's gonna open up two other lanes on the map. Right. We can see he has completed his BKB. So, Phonic at least making some progress. But yeah, I mean, Fluff has had a phenomenal game. 8 no, 4 0 for TC. Fluff's man of the match right now, alongside Bulba, but. Assuming Fluff does a lot of the play calling too, I'm, I'm, I'm prone to give this to, to Fluff, this victory. Yep, Fluff is. And you know, and. It, 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 the thing about Fluff is, it, whenever Liquid wins, and I think that's one of the things I like about Fluff that you've just kind of touched on, he contributes to the team in so many ways. He's a fantastic player in his own right. He is, um, at least to the best of my knowledge, I could be wrong, but as I understand that he's usually the one responsible for most of the drafting, and he is mostly the shot caller, too. So whenever he, you know, 
whenever he has a, a bad game, they still win just because he contributes in so many other ways. Whenever he has a good game like this, it tends to not just be a win, but a very lopsided win, and that's definitely what we're seeing in practice. Now, Korok has completed his work in malevolence, so that's going to give them that extra little bit of punch they need being able to jump in and silence the brewmaster in particular extremely high value in terms of dealing with him and getting him off the board and you know you look at Havos, he's got his diffusal blade up he's got 1800 gold in the bank but again he's got less farm than lena right now and we can see liquid now beginning to flex their muscles a bit here in mid, and Na'Vi doing just about the only thing they possibly can, which is turtle under their tier 3, and hope that the anchor heroes they have and the Keeper of the Light and the Brew are enough to slow them down. We see Infast, that's actually a really good one for Kuro to have stolen. And we'll see. I'm honestly a bit puzzled by how poor the farm on Korok is, because we're 20, 28 minutes in, and it seems like forever ago that I pointed out he only had a Oblivion staff, and only just now does he finish off his orchid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely not had the best game. Thing is, though, when you look at the total net worth, he and uh, Queen of Pain are right on top of each other. So, I mean, it's just his team freeing things up and keeping things down on the other side so much that even though he is in relatively bad shape, I mean, he's virtually being doubled up by the Lifestealer just in comparison. But he has that Lifestealer on his team. So, I mean, just having the orchid up late as it might have come. More than enough, and I like what Liquid's doing here. Very slow and methodical about this push. Is using Rage, raging through the Illuminate, and slowly chipping away at this Tier 3. And another Creep Wave. Another Illuminate spam. That's... nope. <laughs> it's dodged by the Infest. The Hawk is doing some spawning as well. Korok's going to be looking for a target as they look to rush this high ground now. And here we go. He's going to grab Kuro. Kuro blown up. Brewmaster blows the ulti. TC still going. There's the roar. Funix going to go ahead and spend his ulti. Caught a bunch of the supports, but just not enough. And we're going to see the Brewmaster ulti come to its end sometime soon. In the meantime, Funix is cleaned up for good. TC tossed it in the air by the air aspect, but it really just doesn't matter. And we're going to see Havos cleaned up, and now Brewmaster making a run for the well. Dindy just can't do a whole lot. Fluff, by the way, is godlike, the announcer informs us. That's going to increase his kill total, and yeah, this man has had a crazy strong game. And at this point, really, it wouldn't surprise me to see the GGs come out sometime soon. Oh, it will. There's nothing Navi can, can do about this, this item advantage of Liquid. You saw Nyx just go in and kill off two of the pandas right away. Mm -hmm. Panda ultimate, pretty much useless at this stage of the game. And rest of the lockdown on Liquid just took out Korok right away, then Poppy, and then... I mean, we, we're seeing the fight rage on here. It's over. It's, that's why I'm not breaking in and getting super excited. As we see, Korok basically is just... He should have been dead ten times, and Puppy does call GG. So, 30 minutes it took them. And Liquid, this might be the single most lopsided win I've, had, I've ever seen Liquid take. I've seen Liquid win some games, but I don't know that they've ever won like this. And, you know, it's one thing to win like this against the team that's good but not as good, like Kaipi, for example, a team like that. But to do it against Na'Vi, pretty impressive performance here, Milk. Yeah, they just uh, they got the ball rolling and kept the groove on. That was uh, impressive. Boba and Fluff especially, I think they did great throughout the game. And then Liquid and Korok, uh, I mean TC and Korok just got the items and jumped in and killed off everything. They were giving Navi a chance and I don't think Navi had, with these picks, they had no response to that. They had no disables, they had no lockdown against all the lockdown on Liquid, so there's really no way they could actually turn it around, and that's one of the pitfalls of picking a, a Keeper of the Light. It doesn't really offer all that much but the Illuminate, and you're gonna need other lockdown. When Liquid started running around the map and roaming around, all Navi could really do was hope that Ruby could disrupt that. And, and do counter gangs, but it's not really reliable, and that really cost especially funding his life a few times. 
31 minutes, one second, the official game time, 24 to 6. Liquid rolls over Navi here in game one of our opening best of three in the lower bracket quarterfinals. You're here on One More Game TV 2. I'm AC, joined by EG Zone Melk, who you're going to be able to see in action later today in their own matchup against Dignitas. Navi going to look to turn that bagel into a breadstick and turn this series around in a hurry. Liquid, though, thinking sweep. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back with game two coming up next.